Hello, this is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 5. This is the first exercise where it truly is a free-form exercise. Um, you're not given any specific steps on how to complete it. Instead, you're given some basic requirements or constraints uh, for the site, and you're asked to come up with your own layout for the, for the roads actually three of them. So I'm going to take you uh, through at least one potential layout and um, give you some ideas, but really you should come up with something completely different on your own. The first thing we'll do is get a sense of what our constraints are. First thing is we've got a 150 foot or 45 meter if you're working in metric minimum offset from the road center line to the backs of the lots. So that's the distance from center line of the road to the backs of the lots that we'll be creating. Also, we need to create a perpendicular intersection at this location, at point A. We also need to avoid this area here, which is the steep area. We're saying the land there is just too steep to build on. You couldn't, you know, if you, if you did build a house there, the yard wouldn't be usable because the, uh, the property would be so steep. We also want to try to use uniform geometric properties whenever we can. 90 degree angles, parallel lines, maybe even some even distances. And also, we know that this, this property right here is going to remain the property of the farmer. So we don't have that available to subdivide and create lots in. So I'm going to kind of look at this two ways. In the first way, I'm going to establish my constraints and then draw within those constraints and then the second way is going to be a little more freeform so we know that we have 150 foot offset from the road center line to the backs of the lot so let's reverse engineer that we know that our outer property line is the absolute backs of the lot so I'm going to use the offset command with 150 foot distance because I am working in an imperial drawing and I'm just going to offset this outer line 150 feet. So now the idea is if I were to put an alignment through here I could put, put lots on this side of the alignment and they would be the depth that they are supposed to be. Here we've got the steep area and I'm imagining the road center line coming around here and this being the backs of the lots here. So I'm going to do the same thing offset 150 feet from the edge of our steep slope area. Okay, so now I'm picturing the alignment coming around here to this location. So I've got a fair amount of open space here that isn't developed. So what can we do with that? Well, if this is the center line of the road, what if we continue to build lots to the north? So I'll do another 150 feet. That would be the back of another set of lots. Another 150 feet would be the center line of another alignment and another 150 feet would be the back of the next set of lots. So here we have lots, here we have lots with an alignment in between. Lots here and here with an alignment in between. So this is pretty similar to what we have worked with in the book but you can see kinda how it how it transpires. Now the uh, the alignment layout in the book kinda bends here and turns back up this way where this is a little a little more straight. So now I'm just going to take this geometry and clean it up a little bit with the trim command. Get everything a little more clear. And this is going to be an alignment. And this is going to be an alignment. So I can get rid of these two guys. And I can actually get rid of this as well. So now we're starting to see a little bit of the alignment layout take shape here. Now we also have to deal with this perpendicular tie-in at point A. So one thing I learned back in geometry class in ninth grade is if you want to make a line that's perpendicular to an arc, you draw it through the center point. So I'm going to draw a line from the center point of this, this big arc, the uh, center line of the road, through the center of point A and then I can extend that right out to my road center line and that is one way I could do it. I could turn here and tie perpendicular but I'm, use, I'm really using or losing a lot of area right here so 
I'm going to try to jump over and, and get along this alignment a little more quickly. So I'll just draw a line through here, uh, obviously not being very accurate, and just trim things up here. And now I have something I can use kind of as a construction line as I draw my alignments. So now I'll go up to the alignment, alignment creation tools. I'll call this Jordan Court. Let me make this dialog a little bit smaller. It doesn't need to be quite so big. Jordan Court. And I'll just use my tangents with curves command to kind of trace over what I've got here. So turn on my O snaps, in fact, to make this go a little quicker. And there's my Jordan Court alignment. We can adjust the maybe the radius of this curve. I'll turn on my dynamic input so I can enter in the radius of the curve. Pretty nice feature. And then we have another alignment here that would be a new alignment. So I'll, I'll repeat the command alignment, alignment creation tools. This will be Madison Lane. Draw another alignment here. And that's a good start. Now, mind you, that only took about six minutes to lay out. And in a, in a real project, when you're you know, back at your office doing a design for a client, you're going to want to spend more time on that and come up with something a little more sophisticated. But for our purposes here, for, for training and learning, that works pretty well. Now, I, I told you I would maybe look at a different approach. And, you know, what if we didn't do it that in that order? What if we didn't establish our constraints first and just kind of took a look at some freeform alignment drawing? So I'm going to go into my alignment creation tools and uh, start off with Jordan Court again. And this is the beauty of Civil 3D is it's so easy to edit that you can really freeform things and then come back and, and make them more accurate later on. So I'm just going to start by snapping to point A and kind of eyeballing uh, a 90 degree angle and just kind of come up with some brainstorming ideas on how I might break up this piece of property into um, into parcels. So what if I what if I brought this around this way? I'm just going to end it right there. And already it looks like I have too much space here. So Again, the beauty of working with alignments is that I can edit them so easily. So I'm going to move that down a little bit. I think that's about how much room I need. It may be more, it may be less, but I can look at that later. And now I'm going to look at a completely different way to handle the alignments. Let me make a few more new alignments. I'll call this Madison Lane. And for Madison Lane, I'm going to come off the, the alignment in this location. And you know what if I brought it up here and turned it over into the corner, and maybe this would uh, this would be a cul-de-sac out here. I'll put another 50-foot curve in right there. So I've still got some other open space that I can fill up. So let me launch the command again, and we'll call this Logan Court. What if we did something like this and maybe brought Logan Court over into this area? And you can see how quickly you can generate lots of different scenarios. This I'm going to call Ruby Lane. And we'll do, uh, do a layout for Ruby Lane that fills out some of this space. And maybe that one needs to end right in this location. So again, we're just doing some uh, some preform layout. And now we can start to check our design constraints. We know we have a 150 foot requirement to the backs of the lots. So I'll start doing some offsetting. Or better yet, I could even use an offset alignment, which we don't cover in the book, but 
it's something you would want to definitely look into as a possible solution for what I'm trying here. So it looks like I'm pretty close with this alignment. I'm a little tight on the 150 feet right here, but it looks good along the back. Just checking out some of these other guys. Looks like I don't quite have enough room to fit all of the alignments that I need in here, but I can continue to tweak and adjust those until I get the separation that I need. Or I may decide, you know, maybe we should take this alignment away, move this one down a little bit, and again, because of the ease of editing with the Civil 3D alignment objects, this becomes a pretty uh, pretty easy prospect. So without spending a whole lot of time being real specific about my layout and working about and worrying about every exact dimension, I can come up with some ideas that are that are quick and maybe present three or four different ideas to to my project manager or to the client that are rough sketches like this before I go any further with the design. So those are some ideas on how you can complete the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 5. Please be creative, try out lots of different things, come up with several alternate layouts, and uh, take advantage of the fact that you can kind of freeform this exercise. That concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 5.